will have kind of a sunrise at 4.30 a.m., followed by cloudy conditions, wind, snow, gradually changing to an icy mist. We'll have our version of a sunset at around 10.30 tonight. All in all, it's a pretty typical day here in Antarctica. Back to you, Al. See you in a week. Yes, Mom, they're all clean. So, you'll be making a trek to Antarctica. What should you pack? What kind of weather conditions should you prepare for? You know, the old joke in Ohio goes like this. If you don't like the weather, wait 15 minutes. It'll change. Well, Antarctica takes that to extremes. I mean, where else can you run into blizzards and cyclonic storms that change with the direction of the wind? And how would you like to try and get a good night's sleep during the summer when the darkest ever gets is just before dawn? Antarctica's extreme climate makes human habitation a challenge on every level. The weather in Antarctica depends on a couple of things. The time of the year and the location on the continent. It's safe to say that it's cold there year-round. But that cold temperature is a relative thing. For instance, East Antarctica is colder than West because of its higher elevation. And the Antarctic Peninsula can feel relatively balmy in January with high temperatures hovering slightly below freezing. Hmm, grab the bathing suits. Latitude, elevation, and distance from the ocean also plays into the daily high and low temperatures you have to deal with. The continent is very cold, windy, and dry. So, what does that mean for people who travel and work there? Well, life in Antarctica is somewhat harsh. Living organisms have a hard time there because the extreme temperature freezes, dries, and blows them away. Because of this, there's not much unfrozen soil there, so very few plants can grow. You'll only find soil in the peninsula region and along the northernmost coastal area. These are the areas that receive a lot of snow. Well, that helps to wash harmful minerals down through the soil and creates reservoirs of water underground to keep the soil from drying out. In these areas, there are a few lichens, algae, and mosses. But the only place you can find rich organic soil are around the penguin colonies, where guano gets mixed into the soil. Hmm, guano. It's the waste or droppings of penguins, bats, and other sea fowl, and is a great fertilizer. Hey, oh, there's always room for guano. Okay, so, how cold is it? In the winter, the temperature at the South Pole averages, uh, minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the coldest natural temperature on record anywhere was taken at Vostok Station, where it got as low as minus 132 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, uh, never mind. That's air temperature cold enough to shatter steel. This is colder than a chunk of dry ice. So, if you go there in the den of Antarctic winter, our summer, you better bundle up. People who are often outdoors, like hunters, hikers, campers, and Antarctica veterans, advise you to dress in several thin, insulating layers, rather than one heavy one. Yeah, many uh, Antarctic adventures begin with a long ocean voyage from one of the other southern continents, like South America. To get to the most accessible ports, ships must pass through Drake Passage. The trip through the passage can feel uh, like a nonstop roller coaster ride, if you know what I mean. Whew. Passengers often strap themselves into their stateroom bunks to prevent injuries from falling out of bed. And everything on the ship must be stowed securely. The waves can exceed 100 feet. Huh, dude, like, that's a mondo, too. The old-time sailors used to say that of these seas, below 40 degrees, there is no hope. Below 50 degrees, there is no God. We have had a interesting trip. We are taking that right there is the sea, and you can see we are rocking. Land ho, Joe. And rolling. Yeah, you can see the land. Get me off of this. I mean, these are turbulent waters in relatively good weather and treacherous waters in severe weather. So, you survived your voyage through the Drake Passage. Now you face another daunting weather phenomenon. Great music. Antarctic winds. Now, these are no ordinary breezes. The wind is mostly caused by heavy cold air over the Antarctic... Oh, for crying out loud.
Thank you. <clears throat> like I was saying, these are no ordinary breezes. The wind is mostly caused by heavy cold air over the Antarctic Plateau that falls under gravity towards the sea. These gravity-driven winds are called catabatic winds and can blow at speeds of up to 345 miles per hour at the coast. The average hurricane has a speed of only 74 miles per hour. These severe winds can cause terrible storms. At the Australian Mawson Station, the average wind speed is 44 miles per hour. The highest recorded wind speed at Mawson is 198.8 miles per hour. Now, that's the kind of wind you find in Category 5 hurricanes. The one place where the wind isn't as severe is high in the Antarctic Plateau, home of the South Pole. Near the pole, the average wind speed is typically less than 8.5 miles per hour, with peak winds rarely getting above 25 miles per hour. And at the South Pole, the winds almost always blow from the same direction. It blows down from the mountains. So, what's the weather like at the South Pole itself? Well, it's located in a permanent polar high-pressure system, so it's the most consistently clear place on Earth that's home to a scientific station. This is caused by Hadley circulation that causes air to descend at the poles, and the South Pole is the driest area on the driest continent with less than one-fifth of an inch of precipitation per month, nearly the same as the Sahara Desert. This is about as thick as a Hershey chocolate bar. <laughs> But there's a downside to this polar high. It's called a polar vortex, a jet stream of stratospheric winds. This vortex isolates the polar stratosphere and leads to the chain of events that leads to the devastating ozone hole. This is caused by various pollutants in the Earth's atmosphere and has caused the thinning of the protective ozone layer. The uncritical eye sees Antarctica as a pristine ecological environment. But Antarctica faces many serious environmental issues. In 1998, NASA satellite imagery data showed that Antarctica's ozone hole was the largest on record. Well, how big is that hole? <laughs> Scientists estimate that it covers 10 and a half million square miles. Now, this is only a little smaller than the whole continent of Africa. The hole has increased ultraviolet light, which has damaged the DNA of ice fish, an Antarctic fish that lacks hemoglobin. Thank you unlike these cute little guys who have plenty of hemoglobin. This affects how efficiently they transport and use oxygen within their body. Now, this could ultimately cause the species to become extinct. <laughs> nah, <laughs> just joking. Ozone depletion has also harmed one-celled Antarctic marine plants. Global warming also has harmful effects. Because of it, in 2002, significant areas of ice shelves disintegrated. So, with severe low temperatures and high winds, Antarctica is not very hospitable for its nearly 4,000 average yearly inhabitants. But despite the horrible weather, Antarctica remains a living laboratory worthy of an ongoing scientific research. Don't worry, buddies. We're not going to Antarctica. We're going to Disney World. <laughs>